We're just going to start. Okay, we will call to order the regular Tracy City Council meeting for Monday, February 28th. Start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Anybody in the audience want to do our invocation? <laughs> All right. Dear Lord, bless this hearing. <laughs> Do we have any corrections to the agenda? We don't. Uh, the agenda we have is uh, as submitted. <clears throat> Motion to approve is written. Second. First and second. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Is there anybody in the public here to talk about something that is not on the agenda? Okay. Moving right along to the consent calendar. Motion to approve the February 14th <coughs> council minutes, approve municipal accounts payable and payroll without breakthrough beverage, approve municipal accounts receivable, and approve the February 17th CCWG minutes. Second that. At first and second. Any further discussion on that? Roll call, please. Oh. Aye. Landy. Aye. Seeks. Aye. Goodman. Yes. Uh, Schultz. Aye. Schmidt. Yes. Mayor Corbett. Aye. I'll make a motion <coughs> to approve accounts payable for a break th breakthrough beverage. So. First and second. Any discussion on that? Roll call, please. Landy. Aye. Goodman. Yes. Jones. Aye. Tell. Aye. Schmidt. Yes. Mayor Cormick. Aye. Does anybody have anything for Mayor Council communication tonight? Okay. We'll move on to the department heads. Everybody jump on. you first. <laughs> <laughs> first time he's ever been first. I'll never get first. I'll never get first. Okay. I sent a report last week, um, but there's three things I'd like to go over with you quick tonight. <clears throat> just to make it uh, um, the first thing, just for the, the public, on a week from this Wednesday would be uh, March the 9th, and starting at 11 in the morning until 3 in the afternoon, we're going to have a careers to come home to where we're going to have uh, 25 businesses from around the area are going to be set up in the VMC here. Um, there's going to be probably 30, maybe 31, 32 tables total with the businesses and different, uh, um, like Army National Guard. <coughs> Army National Guard, uh, there'll be most of the businesses from around here, but there are a few other ones from around the area that are going to be present that day. Um, by doing that, we were able to get career forces out of uh, Lyon County to uh, to market it for us and advertise for us through deed and indeed so we are gonna we're hoping for the best on on the number of people that are going to be coming to that from three o'clock until seven o'clock but from eleven o'clock in the morning till three o'clock in the afternoon will be when the sophomores juniors and the seniors will come here where the business people and the uh, the places of business around Tracy will talk to the students about <clears throat> what there is to come back to Tracy to after you graduate summer jobs, that type of thing. They get a bus ride down here? They are. They're going to get a bus ride down here, and they're going to spend about 45 minutes here, George, each one of the classes. So they're going to have an assignment, each one of them, to talk to a certain amount of people, so they're going to know who's going to be here, so they'll know what, what, uh, what businesses that they want to talk to. So we're going to be promoting that over the next week and a half to uh, make that as, you know, just, you know, for from my standpoint, if we can convert three or four of the students out of each class that maybe didn't think they had a, an opportunity here in Tracy after they don't go to school or even after they do go to school, if they can come back here. Um, that's just uh, a few more young people that come to town that possibly will start families here as long as they have good jobs. So that's what we're promoting there. So then what's from three to seven? From I'm sorry, and I didn't do that very well, Jerry. From three to seven, we're going to actually going to be, it's actually going to be a job fair for the public this year. So there's going to be um, that's going to be advertised with anybody who's had who's on unemployment 
who has uh, maybe is only a part-time workers or that type of thing. That's, uh, that's but it's going to be advertised through Career Forces and Indeed through the state of Minnesota and through the area around here, probably in the three, four county area. How many, how many uh, people are you going to, the places are you going to have here for them to visit? There's going to be 25, and then there's going to be uh, four or five of them that are going to be taking two or three tables. Um, like Minnesota West will be here with three tables. Um, I'm still waiting on Southeast Tech to be here for the table. So you're looking at probably right around 30 tables will be scattered around here. And I'll get that set up on, on Tuesday night, and we'll be ready to roll on Wednesday. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Um, just a couple of things that uh, I didn't put into the report right away. Um, MCP, or the Multipurpose Center, the, uh, the count for the month of February, which ended today, is uh, just, it's normal, 16, 8, 12, 12, 6, 8, 15, 16 people, right around there. That's the, that's the numbers that we're getting at the Multipurpose Center to, to play cards and come over for, uh, just for conversations. And then also, just to, uh, it might, it does feel like it outside a little bit today, but uh, we had our open house this past Saturday here for uh, pool participants or pool employees. And right now we are looking for two assistant managers, but we feel mm -hmm. that we have enough for the, the important, really important part is the, the lifeguards. And, and we think we did a good enough job of that <coughs> last year where we had eight of them return and we think we have about five more that are gonna be applying new this year. So we're gonna be getting them taking their tests here in in uh in april or so getting them signed up through red cross and uh, we will be ready to open the pool up on june the fourth jeff are we helping the kids uh with their lifeguard training we do yes wsi training yep we do we help them out with that training we help them out with pretty much everything um seth the way it works is we help them out with a lot of things if they stay with us the whole summer we pay for half of that and then also we take care of their uh um, the swimsuits and, and that type of thing as long as they stay with us for the full year. Mm -hmm. We even had an adult apply for a lifeguard position this year. Mm -hmm. That's nice at least they won't show um, Actually it's somebody that I'm a little bit excited about just for the fact that it's a, a kind of an authoritative figure in the in the community so we're, we're hoping that works out. It's nice that they won't, that person won't be running off to Cool. Um, and actually August when we have the most trouble is and they don't mind working at nights or it doesn't matter when they work You're exactly right. That's what we discussed with him on Saturday. So it was a good meeting. We had some people show up and Got some uh, just like normal you got some younger Siblings of ones that had done it before and and I think parents see the the uh, the value of having a job with that's flexible and right here in town and if you're gonna be at the pool anyway, you might as well be making money and have a little as you uh, as long as you can keep an eye on everybody in the pool well that's a good turnaround from just not too long ago when we're really scrambling to get yep. well and it was uh, it was I just read an article Seth or I'd seen it on the Sioux Falls news where they had they had three of their pools in Sioux Falls last year that had to shut down because of lack of lifeguards so yeah we've got uh, we've got some good kids around here that are that are doing that okay any questions at all so if you want to promote that a little bit, and, and I'll, I will be sending out the <coughs> careers to come home to and the job fair, I'll be sending it out to every email I have, probably Thursday or Friday. And if you want to share that with uh, at work or with family members or whoever you've got, I'd appreciate okay. that. Okay, thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Tamara, do you want to go? <coughs> So for the month of January, our sales um, were down. Um, last year we still were dealing with COVID and that kind of thing, but in general from what we've heard from the sales reps, January is like down all over the place. And I think they're pushing more the dry January type of a thing too. But um, so our profit and loss, our net income we had we had a net income, but yet we had a um, negative in the cash flow. So um, uh, some of that too is from like having to doing some bridge buying, buying some beer because it was going up, buying some liquor that we that weren't available last year that came available because of the supply and demand issues. Um, Eric and I and um, 
are discussing some like different promotions and that kind of thing. Plus we're um, talking with Jeff and Diane and <coughs> Krista and we're doing like some bigger promotions for like city event type of the things that we're excited about doing this year. So anybody have any questions? Comments? Cam, how's your staffing situation? Actually, well, we went through a little period there, but we're actually back on track. So, so for right now, anyways, yeah, we had some issues for a little bit. So, what, what's besides yourself? How many people work at this a liquor store? Then? There is now four part time. Okay. So you're the only full time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now that you know, yeah. So we yeah lost one for a little while and. Yeah, now we're back to four. So now we're good for a while, hopefully. Okay. <laughs> and you feel your hours are where they need to be? I mean, as far as... Um, well, for ahead. right now, but in, we definitely need... We've heard lots and lots of comments about closing at eight. And in the summertime, you know, when it's back and light out later, we definitely need to go back to... Spring, we definitely need to go back to the nine o'clock closing. You know, whether and staying, I mean, not opening until 11, I don't think is that big of a deal, but we definitely need to, in spring and summer, do the 9 and nine and 10 o'clock closing for the lake and for the people who are just doing yard work and that kind of thing later at night and people at construction with jobs that work later. <laughs> I, I, I understand that um, beer prices are on the increase. Has that affected demand or sales at all? Or? You know, I think actually that, I mean, I think that people realize, I mean, because it's not just beer, like liquor has gone up. So I think people are realizing that everything in the world right now is going up. And unfortunately, us, like everybody else, have to raise our prices to compete with, I mean, to offset what they're charging us. So, mm -hmm. so. you don't have any Russian liquor on your shelves, right? Nope, got that off. <laughs> we didn't have any. <laughs> any other questions? We good? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Al, do you want to go? All right, I uh, just have a couple things to add for you. I mentioned in my report I was um, looking to plan a couple of events in March. Um, so we're doing a movie night, a family movie night on Friday, March 11th at 6.30. And then the <coughs> next day, we're going to do like a board game day for families to come in. And you can play with other families or your own or whatever. Bring your own games or we'll have some there. And we'll do that Saturday the 12th from 2 to 5. So now if we get a blizzard that weekend, it's my fault and I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what the movie is? I do, but I don't know if I can say it oh, okay. um, on TV because okay. it, it, uh, for our licensing agreement, yeah. like we could, we can't put it on Facebook. But we can put it on our website. I've got it printed up, and it's at the library, oh, so and, or anyone can call. And so we can call and ask. Yes, you can call and ask. <laughs> it's a good one. Sad. It is a good one. But it's a current movie. It is. Yep, it's a newer Disney title. So. <clears throat> Want to see that. <laughs> it's no, not. But, no, but you're, no, but you're close. <laughs> but it's really good. I've, I've just recently seen it myself. So, okay. good. yeah, so we hope to see a lot of people there. We're going to, oh, and I forgot. Um, Jeff's going to bring the popcorn popper over and we'll have some popcorn. That was March what? March 11th will be the movie. Yep, at 6 30. Mel, I saw an interesting article in the Star Tribune about uh, one of the Twin Cities libraries, and they were talking about super users of the library. Mm -hmm. And there was one family of five, and I think I'm remembering this correctly, that they to took out a total of 12,000 items through the year, oh and God. super user. And, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, I'm just curious, do you keep track of um, users like someone who, who really takes it out I mean do you catalog it by family or? I mean we can we can search and look for you know your top yeah. um, the most circulations each year you can you can look that up oh, okay. 
and it's you know it's just a fun thing to look at but yeah you know we definitely have some families who they keep us busy and we love them yeah. so it's great are you looking for an award seth or no, I know I was wondering. Well, that'd be an idea. I, I wouldn't. I maybe over two items. But, uh, you But you really you can't overdo it. With the uh, with the permission of the family, it might be fun to just yeah, publicize that, that given award. Yeah, that, that would be fun. You want to make this a competition? <laughs> well, no, I didn't say that. I just thought that was the yeah, <laughs> and something fun too. When if you do come into the library and you check out a huge list of books and we print out your receipt for you it'll say how much you saved by using the library today which you know meaning that you didn't buy all of these books and movies and whatever you know so sometimes that number can get pretty high for people too it's interesting to look at you know, i have i think one family that then keeps track of all that um for how much so she how saves current of like movies can you get through you guys uh pretty current i yeah. mean um you know, I try to keep track of what's new. I, I order a lot of family-oriented things because that's typically what gets checked out. So can you, like, like if I wanted to see if you had this movie, do you, if you don't have it, do you get it off the pub yep. or the Plum Creek? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep, so there's, you know, there's very little that we can't find, but it does happen. I noticed, Mel, that you sent a memo here saying that uh, uh, the library system is seeking a $2 million increase mm -hmm. in legislative funding. If that would go through, what kinds of things would you be able to, would be enhanced at the library? Well, here? so what that's for is going to be for our regional system. So that's mm -hmm. the Plum Creek system right. that we're all members of. Right. And basically with Plum Creek, it's it's been pared down to the absolute bare minimum services since I've been working here. Mm -hmm. And there has been no increase to that. And to give an example, I don't know that, that we'd be talking about adding anything anytime soon, but to give an example of how badly this increase is needed, <clears throat> the only reason that Plum Creek was able to buy a new delivery vehicle was because we didn't have a director of the system for about a year and a half. So we were able to buy that because, you know, we had not filled that position. Um, so that's a pretty sad state of affairs that you're only able to do something <clears throat> because you're going without something else. Um, so, and like I said, it was, it was, it was in there last year and Everybody was for it. I don't know how it got cut from the final education bill, but it did. So, um, okay, feeling pretty good about it, but I hate to jinx it. <laughs> but yeah, I'll be so I'll be um, in a meeting in that for that on Wednesday with one of our local senators. Okay, all well, good. All right. Anything else? Thank you, Val. All right. Thank you. Am I it? Yeah, you're it. That's for last, right? <laughs> That's what I told <laughs> I hope everyone had a chance to read my report. I can answer any questions you may have on that. Um, kind of where it stands now, just so everyone is on the same page, uh, we have not hired um, or had an applicant that fits the uh, requirements for the water wastewater operator yet. So. You know, that's still open. Um, you know, anybody that's a water wastewater operator that wants to come to Tracy, uh, send them over. Where are we all advertising it? Everywhere. Um, so um, it, it's advertised in all of the publications to the state of Minnesota that do these kinds of things, the League of Minnesota Cities. We've been advertising it in Iowa and South Dakota, um, as well as on Indeed and all of those places. And so I would say that generally speaking, it's, it's had pretty wide play. My understanding uh, in talking to Peggy, who's been you know, heading this piece up, is, is that you know, the feedback we're getting is that there's a lot of these positions open throughout the state. Um, we really think 
and I was going to talk about staffing in my report a little bit because that's actually an important point. Um, we really, Shane and I had a discussion this morning and, and uh, we were talking about, you know, what if we can't find somebody? You know, what do we do? Shane has passed his tests that he needs to pass. So, you know, we, we have a, a legal operator for the system. The issue is just that this was a full-time job and now Shane is doing that in addition to everything else. So ultimately, one of the options we're looking at if we can't hire somebody is to find somebody and train them up. Now the, the, the problem with that, it's not a problem, but the impact of that if we do that is, is that it will take at least a year for someone to get a Class D wastewater certificate and it will take three years for them to get a Class C water treatment certificate, which means even if we hire somebody today, it will be three years before that person is qualified in our system. Um, and those are state regulations. And so um, our other option is to outsource it, which is going to be expensive, uh, more expensive than hiring somebody. So um, it's a dilemma for us. We're working through it. Um, and but we're starting to look at those other options. I don't know if you want to add anything else if that's I don't have any other information at all. I have a few emails out on <clears throat> cost to outsource like bits and pieces of it, whether it's an operator for a fill in or um, you know utility locating <clears throat> services when that picks up the spring. I actually talked to a few of them today. I'm just waiting for some information back from them so um, so I might have more at the next meeting but Kind of where it stands now. We're on to plan B and plan C at this point is what it amounts to. I mean, we've been pretty aggressive in terms of advertising it. We literally haven't had a single applicant that was qualified for the job. Um, Part of that job is locating also? Locating, work orders, um, winter snow removal. Is, is that something that <clears throat> we could get someone else to cover that you already have on staff to do the locating? Or do you have to have a license for locating you wouldn't um and say that's not it's not a huge you know to locate you could have 12 one day and yeah you know like now we haven't had maybe one in the last three months you know because it's 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 the off season but you know and you start getting these uh, contractors come in and surveyors that's when the locates really start coming <clears throat> in um you know so it's kind of you know, it's it's up and down all the time on that. So what I'm trying to get at somehow is, is that something you have to do now, or is that something else? Say, Mr. Karen can do, or anybody else that you got, you could train them to do it, so that you don't. Physically Anyone can have be to trained. There's no license requirement for that. I mean, I'm just saying, so that you don't physically have to do it. No. You got your George could be trained. Yeah, yeah George could. Or did my wife? I'm, I'm untrained. <laughs> I, I I think council member that. Shane is training people to do some of those other things like some of the sampling that happens and some of the some of the locating and things like that yeah um, but at the end of the day you know you're still down a full-time person and that means they can't do something else yeah. and yeah. so we're, we're gonna have to probably decide if we're just gonna hire an additional person um, as an apprentice essentially you know and we, we kind of train them through the process if we went that route, we would love to find somebody who, you know, is really interested in, in staying here, maybe even a recent high school or current high school graduate, you know, that doesn't have a desire to go to college but wants to have a job. I mean, this is the kind of position that, you know, would pay, you know, $25, $26, $28 an hour today if you were if you were certified for it. We wouldn't hire somebody at that rate, but that's the kind of pay you could eventually get. This is a job that does not require a college degree or any college at all. You just have to go through the appropriate training and pass the tests. And so, so it's a good job with benefits for the right person in the right circumstance, for sure. Will the city of Tracy have someone at this career fair then? <clears throat> yes. Schooling, you can send uh, you can send a person to school to do this, but it's still one year, so you're better off just having them work, and then they know your system, because you go to school, it's on a generic platform. It's not, you know, every system's a little bit different, and 
a different class. So, and then you'd still only end up with a class D when you leave there. So you'd still have to work two more years to go for the class, the class C. So. Any other questions? I noticed, Shane, in your notes, that you, your department had kind of made a device for flying uh, frozen sewer lines? Yeah, or water lines. Water lines. We had a device, but uh, it started getting pinholes in it. We had to use that one on one house. Uh, the other house uh, we tried seven years ago, and it, we weren't able to get through it because there's some weird bends in it. But I did call. Uh, late last week I did call um, a few of the residents that I had on the list that froze up seven or eight years ago just let them know I said you might want to let their water trickle but mm -hmm. you know, so it doesn't end up happening again so but uh, is your new instrument does it work or how we're not done with it yet you're still perfecting it <laughs> yeah. well I applaud your ingenuity <laughs> we're just re redesigning what we had just a little bit better so we have to fill ours up too too often. It takes long to heat it back up, so okay. it is pretty effective. So when people get frozen water lines, they call you guys. Yeah. If it's in their house, they're on their own. But if it's in their service line, because we maintain from the curb stop to the street, you know, we'll do our best effort to to do what we can. But you know, there's no guarantee with that either. So. If they know that they're going to freeze up, they're best letting it run because they're in the guarantee that it's going to work again. So, in this case, uh, the one we thought out, it was uh, about a foot from the main, is where it froze up. So, good on a new street or old older street? It's in an older, would have been the late eighties probably. The frost is down, uh, it hit over four feet now, so <clears throat> it's, it's getting close. <laughs> uh, Shane, the last snowfall, did you have much problem with people leaving their cars in the... Uh, we had 12. 12? Yeah. Did they heard. get sighted or...? Yeah. yeah. Jason would have more information on that. It's a report I got. <laughs> Sounds like more coming this, possibly this weekend. Uh, one minute it looks like it's going to be freezing rain and rain, and then the next minute it's snow. So we'll probably know Friday night or Saturday morning. Okay. <laughs> Shane, if these vehicles aren't moved, what what's the next procedure? Do we have a wrecker come out and move them and put them in? I the think ground, that's or? yeah. I think that's the process. And if they're ticketed once. And then they're still there the next time, and they're told to that based on what I've read anyway. <clears throat> kind of leave that up to Jason. Um, I, I, I kind of lose track of time, but one of the snow events we had was on a Tuesday night. Maybe it was the last one when people had their garbage cans out in the street. Was that, yep. uh, can you, did you ticket any garbage cans? Or? No. <laughs> Being it's garbage day, we were we were gentle with the garbage. But okay. If it was Thursday or Friday, then it is what it is. But yeah, yeah. But, but the garbage truck was kind of following us around, so. Yeah. Uh, that would be a complicating factor. Yeah. Makes things interesting. Yeah. Anything else? Mm -hmm. All right. so thank you. Thank you. thank you. This is my report. Um, Krista is on uh, vacation in Florida with her family this week, and so she's gone. And, and Jason, of course, is down a few people. So I'm going to talk about the staffing, you know, situations that we have in the city right now. You already heard about the one of them and what we're having to do to deal with that. Uh, we're down two police officers. Um, we did um, actually interview, um, we had three police officers who applied for those positions. We had three, excuse me, that applied that were qualified for those positions. When we had the interview, only two of them showed up. Uh, one of them we offered a position to, and uh, that applicant chose to go to work for another department instead. Um, and so we're having to go back to the well again, basically, on the, on the police officers. 
um, in the short run, of course, you know, you've got Adam and Jason working more, and then in addition to that, you know, we have a <coughs> Lyon County deputy that's filling in some too as well, but, but uh, it's, you know, that, that's a challenge. Um, we have been fortunate in the last couple of years. We're not the only department, that, the city that's seen these kinds of things. This is a, a common issue in a lot of places. Um, We've been talking about partnering with other people, such as Walnut Grove, on potentially sharing a position to try to, you know, get more people interested in it because, you know, they're potentially looking for a part-time officer, and one of ours is part-time as well, and so maybe you can attract more people if it's one full-time position. So we're looking at some different options, you know, to to, to address this, but it's going to be an on it's going to be an ongoing issue, uh, particularly with the police. So many people are leaving this profession right now. Um, and um, it's 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 going to be a challenge, uh, just to let you know. Uh, but we're working on on it. Um, so um, it, it, at one point we'll have another closure and another set of testing, and hopefully bring some additional applicants. But it's going to be a bit yet. Uh, we're going to be understaffed for that for a little while. Um, you heard about the water wastewater operator. Um, I do have a little bit of good news because Lydell, our maintenance and custodial person, is retiring, of course, in about a month. Um, we did hire Jeremy to replace him, um, and he started this last week, and uh, so far, so good. Um, we overhired a little bit, you know, so they can overlap just a little bit, so Lydell can kind of help, you know, train, train him for that job. Um, and so the good news is that we're not down four, we're only down three positions in the city. Um, and as Tam had already indicated, you know, we always have trouble, you know, filling those part-time liquor store positions and, and um, you know, this is going to be a challenge moving forward. You know, this isn't a, this is something we're going to have to address. Um, last year I gave a presentation to the department heads talking about a, the League of Minnesota Cities does a salary survey every year. Um, and uh, we're part of that. Um, it's coming out again in May. Um, at about that time, um, I'm going to give you, well, Peggy will probably give the presentation on salaries, and we're going to have to have some discussions about how we're going to address this uh, because some of our salaries are going to be low. Some of what we pay is going to be low because what you've seen in the last couple of years is, you know, as, as goods go up, as an employment is, or, or employment is down, the salaries and costs of hiring people are going up, this is going to be an issue that we're going to have to discuss in, in terms of how we're going to handle it. Um, it's not great timing for us, especially since our union contract is up at the end of the year, which is another issue that we're going to have to bring to you. Um, and of course, our largest debt payments are happening in 2023. Um, they go down after that, but, but just so you know, there's going to be some pressures on this. Um, we don't know what they are yet, but just a little bit of a heads up, staffing is going to continue to be an issue. Um, and it's not just us, it's, it's, it's everybody, but, uh, but it, is, it is something that we're facing um, at the moment. Are there any questions about that? Um, the other, uh, the other, other, only other big picture thing that I really wanted to address <coughs> is that, that uh, we're, we're going to be advertising the, uh, for the bids for the Ponds decommissioning this week. Um, the bid opening will be, I think, probably on about the I, I should know the exact date because I talked to Kyle about it earlier today, but it's basically the third week of March, um, 23rd or 24th, and then on the 28th we'll award those contracts at that city council meeting so we can get that project done in 2022. Um, and um, at some point they'll start <coughs> restart the uh, restart the uh, street project for the year as well. But um, that's all I have, unless there's any questions that you have about my report uh, that, I, that I submitted in terms of projects and, and what we're doing on that. Eric, is there anything on the horizon uh, with the legislature with a significant increase in LGA or to help us out? Or? I haven't heard anything about the LGA. Um, we will know what our 2022 2023 allocation is sometime in July and August. Um, I haven't heard specifically that the legislature is looking at increasing that. You know, they've got this budget surplus and they've talked about everybody seems to be racing to cut our taxes, you know, 
The Republicans want to reduce the rate. The Democrats want to give us a refund. I don't hear a lot of people talking about how we can give more money, you know, to, to governments at this point. So I haven't heard that specifically from the league. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what we'll see what happens. Um, but they, they definitely have to address that issue in this session for sure. But I will I will look into that and get get you more detailed information if I can. Um, that's all I have, Mayor, for my city administrator's report, and um, we're ready to move on to new business, if you are. So um, what we have um, first um, is a resolution regarding the Central Park Master Plan. So I have um, kind, of, kind of this is what I would suggest that we do. I want to tee it up a little bit first, um, and then we also have Mo Convery from um, ISG, who is the architect, a landscape architect who actually did the plan on the line, and you've, you've spoken to her before, I believe. And I will, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll turn the screen around here in a minute, Mo, so you can see everybody else, but, uh, and, then, and then give it over to you. But I want to tee it up uh, just a little bit. So we have Mo, and then we also have members of the park board who met earlier today to kind of give their final approval of the plan. Um, and so I want to tee it up first by saying that this is a conceptual plan. You know, what we're asking you to do tonight is to approve a conceptual plan. Does that mean that everything on this plan is going to be done exactly the way it describes? No. It, it's going to be dependent on funding and future initiatives and things like that. Does it mean that you're approving spending money on this plan tonight? No. It doesn't mean that either. You'll have to evaluate that in the future. We have some money this year, you know, so that we can apply for a DNR grant for some of this plan, which we will do, but, but, um, but beyond the money that we have allocated for this year, uh, we do not, and, and if we were able to get grant money, that money as well, that's the only money that we have. Um, what the Parks Committee wanted and what you approved is for us to create a vision for what Central Park might be uh, in the future so that we can start building towards that. Um, and that's what this is. This is a vision. Um, and uh, with that, I'm going to turn Mo around. And um, I think that she's already, um, she's already teed up so that she can, she can speak. And I'm going to turn the, the TV this way so that you can see her. The sound should be coming out of the TV. So I'm going to turn it over to, uh, to Mo at this point, if that's all right, Mayor, so she can kind of run through uh, what the, the content of the plan. Great. Great. Well, well, thank, thank you, you so much, Eric. Thank, thank you all, all for, for uh, letting, letting me join you this, this evening. evening. Um, um, I, I and my colleagues at ISG have, have absolutely loved, loved working, working on this plan. plan. So, so um, any, any chance, chance to uh, talk, talk about, about it and share it, it um, is, is, is a wonderful, wonderful experience, experience for us and also um, very uh, excited to hear what you all think of the plan. plan. Um, um, I, know I know the, the Parks Park Committee has, has worked very hard and, uh, diligently, diligently over the past three, three, three months, months, four months, months um, um, to, to develop this and to get the community feedback. Mo, I lost your audio. Hang on a second. I don't know what's going on. I got a message saying the audio microphone is not detected on your computer. <clears throat> I love it. Uh, so, uh, so just, just very, very quickly, quickly. The, okay, the back purpose back. of the master plan, plan is really to set a vision. vision. So, so it's to set, set a, a plan. Are you, Are you still, still there? there? Mm. Yes, we're here now again, Mo. I'm sorry about that. Something happened with our microphone. Mo, can you hear me? Wave your hand. Mo, can you hear me now? I can, I can. I can. For some reason, the computer keeps turning off the mic, and I'm not sure why exactly. And then, um, 
and then uh, for, for one reason or another, uh, you go away at the same time. So uh, my computer's oh, now wow. functioning, but we're gonna try this again. Okay, okay great. great, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> And if, and if it, it um, keeps, keeps having, having trouble, trouble, just let me know, and I, I can actually call in through, through my phone, phone as well, well um, and we can and try, try it that way. way. All right. So, so as, as Eric um, introduced, introduced uh, the, purpose the purpose of the master, master plan, plan is to set a vision for this park. park. So, so again, it's not to set up construction documents, it's not to approve specific budget items, but really to think very big on what a park could be. And specifically, and specifically for this master plan, plan what we are looking at is 20 to 30 years vision in the future. So it's really hard to think now what 2050 may look like. That feels like very far distance. But in terms of planning and developing a, kind of a future goal of a park, that's a good time frame to look at. So that's something else to keep in mind. Um, so, um, so again, again, the purpose of the master, master plan is set a 20 to 30 year vision, vision for the park, set, set a series of recommendations, recommendations based on both um, our uh, architectural uh, expertise, uh, expertise as well as, as very importantly, importantly, the wants and needs of the community um, to, to set us a, uh, a list of what's, what's being, being preserved, preserved um, what, what may be new to the park, park some very minor improvements, maintenance, those sorts of things. All right. So to, so to start, start our planning, planning process, process um, we, we like, like to look at the, the big context of what's, what's going, going on around the park. park. So, so not just zooming in on specifically that, that, that piece of property, property but how that piece of property, property connects to what's, what's happening, happening in town. And then, and then very specifically, specifically from a park's perspective, perspective what, what role does that park play within the park system of the city of Tracy? So for this slide, this piece, this just goes over some of those Big, big ideas, ideas which we, which we, which we um, um, saw in, in terms, terms of its proximity and connection to the rest of the city. Of the city. So, so Central, Central Park is centrally located within the city. The city. Um, um, it, was it was originally platted when the city was originally platted, and, and as, as such, it's kind of forms the central core um, of the city right adjacent to the downtown. Um, one of the important things from that from a park perspective is that it's highly accessible to everyone within the community. So um, we like to think of uh, an area around the park being a direct kind of service area. Um, in terms of Central Park, basically all of the town is in the service area of this park. Um, in, in terms, terms of, of what, what role does it play in the, the bigger, bigger park system within the city of Tracy, there are, there are some, some very beautiful parks, parks that are focused on recreation. So, so um, things, things like the Miners, uh, Sebastian, Sebastian and uh, Werner in terms of having, having a pool access, access having, having other sports, sports facilities. Um, and, and then you have, have more naturalistic areas, areas as well, with Swift Lake Park. park. Um, Central, Central Park, Park is unique, unique in that it can be used for a community, community gathering space, space because, because of its central location, location, location and proximity to downtown, downtown and it's um, actually, actually stored use as, as a central, central gathering, gathering space for the community in terms, in terms of holding the, the um, concerts at the Bancho um, and, and more, more recent, recent community, community events, events as well, such as movies in the park. park. So, so that's, that's something, something very important, important to keep in mind when thinking, thinking about um, its, its role. role. There's, There's just a little, little bit of a delay. delay so. So, so a big, a big piece, piece of the master, master planning, planning process, process was making, making sure that there was a community, community engagement component of this. So this is um, collecting information on the wants and needs of the community and in 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 how they see Central, Central Park. Park. So, so there, there were two phases, phases which were completed as part of this process. process. One, One was, was an initial visioning, visioning so, so kind of these bigger, bigger ideas of what would you, what would a dream park feature look like for Central Park. Um, we, we did a, did a survey, survey and then, and then the, the park committee, committee actually went out, out and talked to their community, community members to see um, what they thought about these items, items and that was done, done in November. November. And, then and then there was, there was a second community engagement um, period that was done in early January that reviewed initial draft of the park plan to see what people thought of them, find out things that they liked, they, they didn't, didn't like that, that when we come, come to this final master plan vision, it really has a lot of community input in it. All right. All right. From, From a, a kind of technical standpoint, our ISG team went out to the site and did a facilities assessment on the existing park features. 
So, so a big, big piece of the historic park, park such as Central, Central Park, park is we really, really want to keep what's special, special there and special. special. Um, and, and what's working, working there and working. And, working. Um, and, and so, so any improvements or new park, park features, features that would be proposed would work, work really, really well with what's existing um, um, on site, um, but, um, but also, also keep what people really love and appreciate about the park going strong. Um, um, so, so in terms, in terms of, of the existing, existing conditions, conditions, things, things that, that we saw that worked work really well, well, the new, new beautiful, beautifully built community um, uh, picnic, picnic shelters, shelters. Uh, uh, there, there are, are some, some gorgeous, gorgeous mature, mature trees, trees. Obviously, obviously the park, the park is very well cared for, for um, um, in, in terms, terms of maintenance. Um, um, things, things that we, that we saw as general, general improvements, improvements mostly, mostly had to do with ADA accessibility and pathways, so, so making sure, sure that all community members can, can access the park, park, move around it, any new amenities, amenities that go in there would be ADA standards. standards. Um, there, um, there were some, some um, historic, historic features on the site, including, including the band shell and, and the fountain that um, make the park very, very special. The band shell specifically, in going, in going forward, forward and being able, able to use it in the future, uh, uh, there, there is recommendation for some renovation, both in terms of just aesthetics, aesthetics painting, plastering, as, as well as some more mechanical items such as lighting, um, some, some electrical, electrical hookups that, that would allow bigger, bigger events, events to happen. happen. Um, um, and, and then, then some park features, features that, that they were put in, they were well used, and it's time for them to be replaced. So the big item here is the tennis or basketball. Courts, courts located in the center, center of the park, park. they, they have, have been um, used, used and they're in their kind of in poor condition um, and, and be the, the space could be better served in another, another way. way. Um, um, as, as well as the warming, warming house, house um, which, which I think might have been, been already removed, um, um, but at, at the time it was still on site. site. Um, so, so again, again thinking about what is special, what works, keeping it, preserving it in place, and then adding in some elements that help it into the next generation. All right. All right. So, so in, in terms, terms of this big vision, vision so, we so we took, took the community engagement, engagement we, we took our knowledge of what the existing conditions, conditions were, and the, and the park, park committee works to develop a vision for the park, park um, um, to, to help guide the master, master plan. plan. So, so the Central, Central Park has been an important community resource and destination to the city's founding. Um, the, the purpose of the master plan provides a roadmap to update, enhance, and expand the park features and amenities to make, to make sure, sure the, the wider community of Tracy, Tracy um, is able to use it for years to come. come. So, so I won't go through all of the goals, but those, those get into a little bit more of the nitty-gritty of the specifics that we're working for. So, so taking this information, information um, um, what, what we, we then did, did is look, look to start to spatially, spatially align it in the, in the park. park. And that, and that is, is how, how we developed, developed this master, master plan. plan. So, so again, again, I'm not going to go into all of the items, items here just in the interest of time, but I'm, I'm going to um, call out some highlights of this. this. So, so again, again, this, this big vision is to create a community gathering space, space that has some really amazing and unique park features, features that are going to bring the community of Tracy to this park in future years. So I'm going to start from the south and work my way north. So, so right, right off of Roland, Roland um, we, we identified, identified the opportunity for a large, flexible lawn space, which is currently there, there um, but, but really calling it out specifically for events, events and, and locating a, a wider walkway, walkway which is just north of that space, space that could be used to set up tents, um, and, and we're, we're calling, calling out specifically an art walk. walk. So, so the opportunity to do public displays of art along that walkway. So the, so the band shell we're calling, calling it out, of course, course pre -preserved, preserved in place, in place but, but to have some of those improvements added to make sure that it's able to host um, events for, for years, years to come. come. Um, and, um, and also, also for, for it, it to not get in too, too bad, bad conditions to, to use for its purpose. purpose. Um, um, to, to expand, expand the opportunity for um, more structured events, events to happen, happen there, we're calling out for some um, permanent, permanent seating, seating to be added. Uh, that's, that's number nine, nine. So, so for audiences. audiences. So, so this is really good, good for people with um, different mobility needs or, uh, you, know, you know, to, to hold, hold a graduation, graduation uh, in, in the, the park, park, things like more formal occasions, occasions where people, people may not be bringing um, chairs and things with them. 
So, so number 12, 12 is, is the existing picnic pavilion. pavilion. That, of course, is remaining in, in, in its place. place. We are, we are recommending, recommending that some um, um, ADA accessible route be uh, uh, added, added to, to it, a sidewalk, just so, so it's easily accessible, accessible to everyone. everyone. And, and I think, think the big, big, big feature, feature and the big move specifically in the plan is the removal of the tennis and basketball courts. And, and in, in its place, um, um, putting, putting a new updated ADA accessible um, all age uh, playground. playground. Um, um, and, and this is, I think, think a big, big kind of move, move now, now we're understanding, understanding the importance of different, different ages playing, playing together, having, having it be um, um, in, in a, a nice, nice protected, protected space, space so people, people can kind of come and just let their kids, kids play away. Um, um, Jason to this. Because, because we are, we are removing courts, courts, we are calling out a half court basketball as well. Um, um, and, and then surrounding this by some understory plantings, plantings, which are actually, actually not just um, uh, a, a beautiful, beautiful feature, feature, but can be an educational, educational feature, feature as well as a play feature for people with different sensory needs. All right. right. The next, the next big area, area is the ice skating rink and stormwater water feature. Um, um, of course, this has long been a destination for the community in the winter time. time. Would, um, um, the master, the master plan, plan proposes as some updates, updates. Uh, is, is to include, include some stormwater plantings, plantings along the basin, basin, and I can show you pictures of that shortly. shortly. The purpose the of this is to add some, some really great beauty <laughs> in this area through this natural planting. Very low, low, low maintenance. maintenance. Um, it's um, a habitat, habitat and it actually improves, improves the stormwater. Water. So, so there's, there's like five great, great things, things working, working for it and adding, adding that feature. feature. Um, um, it, but, but it would it maintain, maintain its, its function, function in the winter, winter as, as a skating, skating rink. rink. Um, um, we, we did add some benches right, right adjacent, adjacent to the rink just for ease of people putting on their skates and things like that. That was something that came up as a theme actually of the original community engagement survey. Um, and, um, and also, also to, to support, support kind of four season, season use, we are calling out for a new warming house slash flexible park, park shelter that would be closed um, right, right off, off of that space. space. So, so in the winter, it would be warm, warm for events, people, people could, could you know, you know, come, come out, out have some hot chocolate, chocolate in, in the, the um, new, new warming house and access to skating. In the, in the summer, it could be used for very small classes or for volunteer days, they could, you know, have a place to get cool and get a glass of water. Water and stuff like that. Um, but one of the warming house, house was actually, actually called out specifically in the community engagement um, survey is something, something that people really like as a teacher. So, so another kind of two class big, big things, things that this, that this plan, plan calls out, out um, you will see that there are just more pathways through the park. park. Um, this, this is to not only improve ADA accessibility and connections between, between the different park features, features but, it but it also creates a walking loop. loop. So, so for, for people who would like to come out and exercise and just walk around the park, the park and there's some beautiful furniture trees, trees that, that feature for you. you. Um, and then, then two parking, parking areas. areas. So, so the existing parking, parking area off the second street, street would um, be, be preserved, preserved in place with, with some um, ADA improvements. improvements. So you, you can see, see that walkway adjacent to that parking, parking area. area. Um, and, um, and then and a new parking, parking area right, right by the new um, play area. area. Um, and um, this, this is really to ensure, ensure that the play area can meet ADA accessibility um, standards and, and make sure that it's highly accessible to everyone who would like to use it. it. So the, so the cost, cost um, as, as you have probably, probably seen in going through, through the, the, um, the probable, uh, the uh, opinion of probable cost, cost. The parking the areas are a little bit more expensive just because they, they do involve more infrastructure. So we so did um, come, come up with two different alternatives uh, for parking that have, have different costs but, but could um, offer different benefits. benefits. Um, and, and these, these are, are in the plan, plan just, just to, to show that they've been studied, studied and then looked at so, so people, people can reference them if they get, get to that point. point. Um, um, but it would be one of these three items would would happen. So that's, so that's what those, those, those are. are. And, and the, the difference, difference here is Second Street has on-street on ADA parking, so it's a little, little bit less expensive, but there's, but there's less um, parking available there. there. And then, and then um, um, we, we looked, looked at Park Street, Street adding, adding some parking, parking directly off of there, there pulling, that would um, improve um, access to the band shell. 
this is, is a very, very big project. project. Um, um, we, we wanted, wanted to break it up into uh, manageable, manageable areas. areas. So, so um, even, even, even though um, there's, there's a lot, lot of items, items on here, here you're, you're able, able to kind of tackle, tackle them in uh, manageable, manageable chunks. chunks. So, so this, this is what the zones, zones are. This, this is our first attempt, attempt to kind of look at, look at what, what those, those areas could be. be. So zone A is the, the playground of that parking area off of 2nd Street. Uh, zone, zone 1B is, is a little, little bit more of the play area, area specifically adding the half court basketball, basketball and those understory landings. Zone, zone 2 is the band shell improvements and some of the pathways, pathways around that. that. Uh, zone, zone 3 is the art walk, walk and, and lawn improvements along, along Roland. Roland. Zone, zone 4, stormwater. Zone, zone 5, warm house. house. And zone, zone 6 is all of the pathways that are included in that. Uh, those, uh, those initial, initial zones, zones to complete, to complete that, that walking loop. loop. Now, the, important the important thing about, about this is these do not have, have to be completed in this order. order. A, bit A bit of why we did this, this was to allow flexibility of thinking of how, of how these, these could be approached. approached. So, so let's say a stormwater storm grant comes through. through. You kind of understand like a, a good, good manageable scope, scope for that. Or if a group decides to donate money for the art walk, you kind of have that area to look at this. So this is just helping to guide manageable uh, phasing, phasing for the park. park. All right. So, so I talked a lot about, about park, park features. features. The last piece of this package, package is really just looking at what these look like. So, so again, again, this is not a construction document set. We're, we're not calling out specific, specific items for each, each of these features, features but, but we, we wanted, wanted to give an idea of what these look like. So we have some inspirational images on the play area, Park, park sign, sign, walking, walking or walk, walk, park seating. And, and this is, again, again if, if it comes, comes to the point where um, the city decides, decides to go to forward on building a piece of these to help guide what that could look like. like. Right. And, and um, I'm going to leave, leave it, I'm going to end, end it with the planting, the planting. Um, again, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful mature trees. trees, these are just some recommendations for some understory plantings or if a tree has to be removed, um, what, what type of species, species might um, be, be good, good for that. that. All right. So that, so is, that is the, the end, end of um, my, my presentation. presentation. Eric, Eric, should I stop, stop for a question? question? Well, that's a good question. Would you like to Would you like to ask most of the questions, or would you like to bring the park committee up first and and then ask questions? What's What's your pleasure? I say have the park committee come up because after they've talked, after her, our questions might be all answered. Yeah. Or we would know specific questions. That's that fine. Well, I'm gonna let one. I'll I'll leave you on Mo, and then the park committee can come up and give their thoughts about it, and then we'll go from there. That works. Great. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Sure. Well, the main thing I want to say is that I think we have an exceptional team with us and Shane, who is really into this, our editor, who is giving it all the credit that he can, all the encouragement and getting everyone to know what's going on with the committee and our, excel, our <coughs> wonderful administrator who's been extremely helpful. I don't think we could have done it without you. Thank you, Connie. Yes. Um, I think you have to realize that we're just asking for your commitment to it <coughs> and uh, not your money yet. We have some money available to get a start but uh, it's a long-term project. It'll, it'll be going on a lot longer than I'm here. And uh, we're just hoping that you'll be part of our team. Okay. I'm just going to ask you to please give your consent to this um, plan. We're not asking, like she said, we're not asking for money. We're not saying, hey, give us, but just please give us the chance to keep on working and making something good. So please approve it. Uh, I would just like to add to that that I think the plan lays out really well the opportunities for different zones to be worked on. There is this year um, the main the what really started the ball rolling for this was <coughs> the fact that the playground equipment had a great application last year, but just needs a little bit more to get pushed through. So this will open the doors to different opportunities for funding to make the park really great 
and to allow the phases or the zones to happen as those different funding opportunities arise. Mm -hmm. So it really could do a lot for the city um, by approving this conceptual plan. Yeah, there's a lot of work to do as far as yes, you know, and looking really at each area and saying, okay, we can do this now and we might not be able to do this other that we want to do um, for a while yet, but <clears throat> we have a lot of work to do. <laughs> It is a really high level plan and that's what its intent is, but it also includes some, you know, like great estimates in there so that you guys can see like, okay, what are we kind of committing to on a 20 to 30 year basis? And those numbers are just kind of estimates as of today. So they're not set in stone as each phase or each zone gets worked on. Those numbers would actually have the potential to change quite a bit depending on what decisions or what choices were made at that time. Do you have a particular zone that you wish to start with? That's a great question. Would that be yes. zone A or? We're going to start with the playground equipment. Um, we figure that would be the best place to start to make the improvements is to put in the new playground equipment. <clears throat> and that's where we're going to start with that first. The playground equipment is what started all this. Yep. Because we couldn't get that without a major plan. We couldn't get a grant. We were nowhere. And so it just evolved into something larger and um, better. And now with this plan that we have, our chances of getting grants are much, much better um, because it shows that we're interested, <coughs> we're committed, and we're willing to do the work. And our chances are so much better for grants with this that we have. Is there any grants out there right now for playground equipment? Um, there it can answer. Yeah, let me let me let me talk about that. So, <coughs> so what the plan is next is that there's a Department of Natural Resources grant that's due by the end of March, and so our plan next is to um, take this plan, uh, assuming that you uh, accept it tonight, and then uh, we'll start. We'll put together a grant application with the money that you already have allocated from this year's budget. Um, that's a 50-50 match, so we would, we would get additional monies from the state uh, if we were successful. We'll be able to do a portion of you know, that Zone 1, that Zone A area where the playground equipment. One of the things that they have told us, the community really told us, and actually this is really important for the Park Committee as well, is, is that the, the, the tennis courts, is, they've just been out there so long and they're so dilapidated and run down that really replacing that with something is 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 really number one priority and so we we're, have tennis courts at the high school that's true so so ultimately ultimately um we actually think it's kind of fortunate we didn't get the grant last year because now we've kind of put some more thought into it a little bit um so the idea mm -hmm. would be that first phase would be we would remove that and do a lot of all that site work then we would put in some of the playground equipment as well as uh, some of the ADA accessible parking because the grant application really looks favorably on ADA accessibility with these kinds of things. Um, and that would be the first uh, grant that we would uh, put together for this year. Um, we'll ultimately bring that back for the park uh, board to review before, before we send it out. And uh, of course, any construction you know, the city council would would end up approving um, as as that arises later this year, but but ultimately that's that's our plan. That'd be the first grant. Now, Can I have a quick question sure. about, about that grant. Yes. So with that grant, that would include we could write to include the cost of removing the yep. tennis courts and prepping that yep. area for the new equipment. Yeah. What's great about that is is that because we have the equipment to basically do the demolition. Um, and do a lot of the site work, um, we can take the value of that in kind. So for every dollar of value that we put in for the use of our equipment and our manpower, we can get a dollar in cash back uh, from the state. And we have $41,000 budgeted. So just for sake of argument, let's say we found $41,000 worth of equipment and manpower and put into it and $41,000 in cash, we could go get another $82,000 and then we have a $160,000 project with $40,000 in cash, which is pretty a pretty good value. I'm not saying those are what the numbers are going to be. That's just hypothetical. We're, we're meeting in a couple days. Actually, the staff is to talk about this and we'll 
we'll ultimately figure out exactly what that application is going to look like here in a, in a couple of weeks. But but that's conceptually the idea. <coughs> yes. I just want to make sure that was allowable under that. It is allowable under that particular grant. So so in kind is considered part of your match. The um, I, I want to add. Um, one of the other things that we really like about this particular plan is, is that each one of these different elements in the park, you could apply for different kinds of grants. So like, for example, the, the ice skating area that's stormwater, well, there are stormwater grants specifically. We could apply for grants for that. You could apply for, if we can get the band shell on the historic register, which we already told you, we think that it could qualify. We need to have a little more work to do that. You could get money from the Minnesota Historical Society for that. You get legacy grants for the, uh, the art uh, walkway, uh, Southwest Minnesota Arts Council. There's all these different pockets of grants that you can go after for each one of these pieces. So even though this is obviously an expensive plan over a long period of time, we think that it helps us position ourselves for each one of those different pots of money. And so it's designed to be opportunistic so that when those are available, we can do that. I also have one more thing to add that we have discussed quite a bit is just the ability of like projects to be identified that the school could participate in, you know, like mm -hmm. the building of the shelter. Right. So there's another possibility that maybe they could help with that Four Seasons warming house structure. And that that's another thing if it's part of a DNR grant, if the school chipped in their time and labor, that that would count as part of the match, too. Um, so, yeah, I, we think that this is, there's community projects in this, volunteer projects, you know, fundraising potential, things like that. We're talking yep. about, we're going to be talking about how we can do fundraising to raise the money to help pay for this. We're really excited about it. Each time we have a meeting, it's like, and especially meeting with Mo, we'd get this and we'd go, oh yeah, right, we were just so fired up, let's go, come on. You know, it's like it can happen fast enough, but we know it's going to take time. But the playground equipment would be a huge visual impact and a huge beneficial change yes. to the park. And we're trying, we're gonna, our goal too is to keep <clears throat> the old and the new and kind of blend it all together so that we don't destroy what's there, you know. Except that none of the old play equipment can stay. Except the tennis court. That's got to go. <laughs> it is a good point because the, obviously the tennis court has to go. But, but the play, people have asked that question, well, what about the existing playground equipment? Are we going to save some of that, preserve some of that? Some of that's 50 years old, and it doesn't meet current standards, and they're going to require us to remove it when we put in new equipment because they don't want, they don't consider that to be safe equipment anymore. I realize, compared to some of the equipment that we may have played on a long time ago, on a blacktop with a jungle gym or something, it seems a lot safer. But by today's standards, they don't like it. So we'll Maybe end the up wheels removing will it. Take some of it. Maybe the wheels. <laughs> they, they've asked, and we, we I mean, told they, them we told them that that we think that they could. We also told them that it wouldn't meet current standards for ADA accessibility. So that'll be something they'll have to figure out. But. But, um, but, but ultimately, yeah, we, we, when we get new equipment in there, we'll be removing all the old equipment. One person I forgot to mention on our team is Val, who is extremely important in writing the grants for us. She's been trained to it, and she does a wonderful job. Yeah, she does. And she may be the one to pull us through. It's on a lot of things. Yeah. <coughs> Any more questions? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Thank you. Thank Thanks you guys, guys for all your work. I, I have one question that probably goes to you, Eric. You say the city's crew or employees can do a lot of this work, then where does the money come from that we have to pay them to do it? Well, I mean, ultimately, if, if someone is, is working on the park, they're, you know, that's, that's part of their job now, ultimately. Um, we do these kinds of park projects all the time. Like, for example, last summer when we put in the walking bridge out there and the riprap and stuff, I mean, that was done all with staff work. And so it's, it's common for our public works crew to do projects in the park, you know, during the summer, whether it be maintenance or projects like that bridge. And, and in fact, the last park, uh, uh, excuse me, playground equipment that was put in at, uh, at um, Greenwood Park um, 
was uh, put in uh, was actually assembled by by park staff at that time too so the short answer is that yes the the I mean they get paid through your general fund tax dollars just like everybody else but doing projects like this is something that we do as a normal course of business so it's not out of the ordinary we would not ask them to do any construction that would be out of the ordinary like they did at the liquor store for example this would be normal kind of you know landscaping site work kind of stuff and some demolition for the most part maybe a little bit of concrete work which is something that that they do also on a regular basis other questions uh, that's all we have in terms of presentation mayor and so there is a resolution that's on your agenda to approve this uh, Central Park master plan and uh, with that we'd be happy to to answer any questions or uh, I'll allow you to to act on that item well, to keep the ball rolling I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2022-22 to approve the park master plan I will second them first and second do we have any further discussion I do um, the DNR now that's 50 50 so we're talking for granted. That's correct. Yep. So what, where's the rest of the 50-50? Where's ours coming from? So you have budgeted in the 2021 budget uh, $41,000 uh, in cash match for that. And any uh, in-kind uh, work that the public works crew would also be added to that match. And then whatever that total amount then then would be doubled uh, with the 50% from, from, uh, from DNR. And you said you're going to be having a meeting, the Parks Committee, along with Shane, so he will have input as to what he feels would be reasonable that his staff would be able to assist with versus... He's already had that input, yes. Oh, I know, but... Yeah, I... but yes, and we'll continuing input, yes. I mean, ultimately, when we applied for this grant the last year, we did the very same thing. We We... We assumed that some of the site work and some of the assembly of the playground equipment was going to be done by the public works crew. And so that was part of our grant application last year. And so we would anticipate doing something similar. And so what Shane will do is put together, just like he did a year ago, a kind of a, a list of you know, equipment and hours and things like that that it would, would take to do these kinds of things, who would be working on it. And then that would all be itemized as part of the grant in terms of where the match is coming from because you have to document that match Any other discussion? We, we will probably also have to bring back an action um, in March before we do uh, the final grant application um, uh, that that um, applies the match specifically we had to do that last year you might recall I think that'll be a requirement of the grant but it'll be one of those two meetings in March when we know exactly what it is um, so you'll you'll see that in detail later would funding be this year it would they make this decision kind of in July um, so if this if we were to get that we might start some of the demolition in in the fall but it would be a project that wouldn't be completed until 2023 just you know because of weather <clears throat> Well, I do support this um, master plan, and I urge the other council members to also support it. I feel like this adopting this master plan is going to bring us some significant short-term benefits, <clears throat> namely that it's going to greatly increase and enhance the chances that we're going to qualify for that DNR playground equipment grant to make that much more affordable. Uh, last year we, we submitted that uh, plan. I, we were all agreed that the old uh, playground main set that's 40 years old is not, it needs to be replaced, doesn't make, meet standards. Uh, it's going to greatly enhance the chance that we uh, will qualify for some grant help to refurbish our band shell. <coughs> and. Uh, most important, this will be a, a, a long-range vision for enhancing the park for uh, the benefit of our citizens and also be a little perk to uh, make our community more attractive uh, for prospective new residents. Um, 
you know, I'm as conservative as anyone on, I, I think, as far as spending money as, as, as a sitting up here. And so I don't uh, just say, uh, uh, you know, support uh, spending more money lightly. But I think that this is something that our community needs to do. We need to gradually make improvements to what we have. Um, we've spent very little for on park improvements in, in the time I've lived in Tracy. Uh, I remember 20 years ago when we came up with the plan to put in those new park lights in uh, uh, Central Park and uh, uh, some people said, oh, boy, that's, <laughs> we can't afford that. And I think once they were up, everyone agreed, boy, that looks really nice. Uh, and we, we also we had a few people from the citizens from the community that helped pay for some of those lights. I, I just think uh, I, we, sh we shouldn't uh, be put off with some of these, uh, I, I, some of the cost estimates long uh, for all of these improvements, but it's, I just think we should consider this. It's a long range plan for improving the park with a step one to get some new playground equipment. So that's my feeling on it. I guess my concern is that, and I've heard this before, that the taxpayer is not going to be paying for this. Okay? That's my concern. Well, all we're doing tonight is approving the master plan. Mm -hmm. we're, we're not approving okay. that we're going to spend citizen money right now i mean we, what we have in our budget we've already approved that that's right but tonight is just to approve the master plan which is a futuristic plan i understand that but i also said and i'll clear it again as long as it's not taxpayer money we're doing here okay that's all i have to say about it thank you Okay, are we ready for roll call? Tiggs. Aye. Jones. Aye. Tell. Aye. Fillman. Yes. Schmidt. Yes. Landy. Aye. Mayor Carmen. Aye. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we appreciate that, and thank you, Mo, for hanging around. We appreciate you too. Thank you, guys. It was wonderful, wonderful to be here. here. All right. Bye bye. The, the next item we have on the list, Mayor, is uh, the private bottle license for the Tracy Eagles Club. Do you have anything on that, Diane, that you want to add to it? It's no, pretty self explanatory. It's just an annual thing that they get. It will go to the state and for their approval as well. It's a system. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2022-23, approval of the private bottle license for the Eagles Club as long as the fees are paid. Second. First and second, any discussion on that? Roll call, please. Kutman. Yes. Landay. Aye. Tell. Aye. Schmidt. Yes. Shones. Aye. Teagues. Aye. Mayor Corbin. Aye. Thank you, Council. The next two items are related items, and uh, tonight uh, we have, uh, I'm going to ask Todd Hagan uh, to come up, who's been very patiently waiting for the last hour. I apologize. Somebody has to go first and somebody has to go last. Understand, understand. Um, I, uh, um, so what came to light a couple of weeks ago, is, as you all are, are painfully aware, is, is that we have to um, essentially uh, issue a new set of bonds, uh, 2022A, which are going to be replacing the 2019A temporary uh, GEO bonds in the amount of $8.395 million. And um, this came to light uh, based on an uh, email that I received from Todd and, uh, and then, of course, communicated to you a couple weeks ago. So I'm going, to let, uh, I'm going to let Todd kind of explain what this is and uh, you know, why we need to do it. And so I'm going to turn it over to him at this point. Great. Um, thanks, Eric. Um, Mayor, Council Members, nice to see you. Thanks for the... Great weather coming over here. It's just, oh, yeah. it's like spring break weather, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> appreciate it. Um, so Todd Hagen from Ellers and Associates. Some of you remember me. Some, some maybe are new to the council, but um, we, as a company, help um, the city of Tracy uh, not only with economic development projects in the past years, but uh, we also help um, Tracy package up uh, bond issues. 
uh, sell them uh, and market them to the public. So um, that's what I'm here tonight for is to sort of go through our pre-sale report. Um, and, and so it's, it's a pretty um, easy read. We try to keep it short and sweet and, and to the point. But um, as Eric had said, I, uh, what I typically do is send my clients um, every uh, so often, um, when interest rates are low, more often, uh, refunding or refinancing reports. So um, what kind of popped up on my radar this time uh, was um, not any, um, anything on my radar, so to speak, for you to save money with uh, by exchanging a higher interest rate bond for a, a lower interest rate bond but I did see that this temporary bond was coming due here on May 1st already and time flies right it's been three years ago since we issued this and, um, and it is maturing on May 1st so I did put a little alert on the bottom of my email um, to kind of spark some attention here at the city which which I did thanks for calling back Eric appreciate that and um, just to kind of walk through um, what, what our options are uh, at this point. Um, so if you remember this, this bond issue is, is really in anticipation or it's ahead of the USDA long-term bond that will be issued after the project is substantially complete enough for USDA to take this out or refi it with a 40-year loan, right? You guys have a pretty large grant that's also attached to this. I think 4.458 million is the grant and Eight million three ninety nine is is the loan. So we're we're issuing this as it's kind of an interim construction loan that has to uh, be you know complete enough the project in order to take this out. So I think there's maybe a year or so left on the project to get this um, this phase three infrastructure improvement project um, to that point. So we need to extend the temporary financing. So state law allows us to do this just one more time. So what it is is, like I mentioned, it's a, it's an interim construction loan, so it's interest only, and then it balloons after the three years, and you can do one more of those under state law, and then you've got to convert it, then you have to convert it to a long-term bond, whether USDA is ready or not. So, um, so I mean, that's what I'm here uh, t tonight for, is to kind of reintroduce uh, a new temporary bond for uh, for that three-year period and I guess my recommendation would be to go three years um, we have this being able to be prepaid like in April of, of next year already so um, it, it can come due um, already we could convert it in April without any penalty or uh, any premium to call whatsoever but if it's not ready by then uh, you know I hate to kind of get it too um, too short where where we would definitely have to kind of scramble to do something else. So uh, my recommendation is to go the, another three years as close as we can, uh, have a prepayment on this um, in, uh, you know, in April of 2023 already. So we're, we're, we're set up for, for the takeout when that time comes. So that's, um, that's, what, that's what I've got. So I mean, um, I would come back then on March 28th and show you the bids on the bonds. So we would publicly sell these bonds uh, to, the, uh, to the market. And I think we would also look at local banks as well to see if we could save some cost of issuance on this too. It's a large bond, but it's short. And so a couple banks might want to go in on this too, and that would save us some, some money as well. So I would do kind of a two-prong approach on, on selling it. And, um, and so what, what we want to do is just keep the par amount or the amount of the bonds the same as last time. And we don't want to increase the amount of bonds. And so, so, you know, so Krista and Shane and Eric, we were on the phone trying to kind of go through different scenarios to figure out how we could achieve that. And, and so we would actually have some, you know, budgeted money, some cash that goes into the bond issue to help uh, pay those extra, you know, costs and the interest costs that are accruing as well. And then, you know, our first payment wouldn't be until April 1st of 2023, actually when I have this bond being able to be refinanced or called as well. So this, this bond might only go to that point and that's fine. You know, we're only responsible for the interest that accrues up to the point where we call them in. But um, I guess my recommendation is to have this go all the way down to 2025, just so we have the maximum amount of terms, just in case the project 
slows down or something, it's not quite ready for USDA to take it out. So, so I'm up for questions as well. So I was just sitting here thinking, um, there are no options out there due to COVID and the pandemic to be able to extend this without refinancing or whatever the verbiage is that, that you use. Right. Because a lot of the holdup was, you know, a lot of places were closed down and, you know, sure. to, to get supplies and everything in. I mean, a lot of it was out of our control. But the government doesn't look at any of that for this? Not that I'm aware of, no. Have you checked into it? It's the timing of the project. But have you checked into it? That due to COVID, we haven't been able to do what we should do, so therefore we should get an extension. Like they said, you can't remove people from their apartments due to COVID. You can't turn their water off. You can't do this, can't do that. Well, we couldn't do our project. So well, the bond, I'm asking you yep. if you've checked in. The bond will mature on May 1st. For sure, there's nothing we can do about extending that other than to reissue another uh, short-term bond. The That's only I other thing we all I was yeah question. I know we're at I mean we're at deadline here to get this yeah. advertised and and everything to meet these deadlines, but yep. it just seems like there's so many things out there for relief due to the pandemic and everything that something like this. Yeah, this bond is held by thousands of individuals, I would assume, that are would be waiting for their money on May 1st. Uh, the only other thing you could do is, is check in with USDA to see if they had um, some kindness in their heart to say the project is complete enough that they could take it out. But I don't think that's an option that's awesome. either. Yeah, I think we've shaken sure. that tree as best we can. The one question I have is, how come it took so long for you guys to let us know about this? Yeah, I, I don't, um, typically, the engineer, USDA, uh, the city, kind of, everybody kind of knows where the project is at, and the financial advisor, you know, isn't privy to that. So we just, by chance, I just saw that come and do on May 1st. That was just by chance on my system that I saw that, that it's come and due. So I'm happy we found that on our end for you guys. I guess that was kind of my take on it too, Mayor, that, you know, this all has a rushed uh, emergency or last minute feel to it. And it just seems like as you're, as you're the bond consultant that should have given us a heads up several months ago. I'm happy that I got it to you three months ahead of time. Yeah, so I, I, I understand. That, I understand. I, yeah. So, do we need our engineers to be more on top of that as we go forward? You no, know, I'm not things? sure how that works. I know I had another one of these in Granite Falls for their nursing home a few years ago, and um, and that one went fine. I think they had a construction project similar to that and they did have to extend their temporary bond again. And basically I was notified, you know, so I, it's whoever talks to, I'm not quite sure, you know, exactly how that, how that's all, how that all runs. I, you know, it has to do with the project. I know that, right? So the project who's ever kind of, I guess, in charge of the project and talking to USDA and um, I've got another couple of these that are converting as well. and. And, and and that was something I was unaware of. So USDA told me. So that's how that works, on my end anyway. So here, is this that ninety thousand dollars we're talking about here? That's a good question. So um, I originally, uh, the morning you know that I of the council meeting that I told you that two weeks ago on the fourteenth, I'd I'd sent uh, Todd an email and I asked him you know how much is this going to cost because I anticipated George's question. <laughs> Um, and um, Todd's response was that it's going to cost the same as the last time, which was the eighty-seven thousand dollars and some change. And I kind of rounded up to ninety that night. So um, then, subsequent to that, we you know we got the we got the information on the bonds, and it looked like it was going to be a lot more. And I said, well, you know, what's going on here? You know, I thought that it was going to be like ninety thousand dollars. And so I'm going to let I'm going to let Todd explain why it might be more than ninety thousand dollars. 
Sure, so when you issued your bonds back in 2019, um, we're gonna set this up the same way. Then we're gonna keep the cost of issuance as far as the professionals, we're gonna keep that the same. I'm gonna try to lock that in for everybody. It's not just our fee, but there's bond attorney and all sorts of other folks that are putting this together for us as a team. There's a, a piece to that, and I think this is what you're maybe alluding to, is the underwriter's discount. And that is a, a compensation paid to the underwriter that can be paid directly from the bond proceeds, or it can be um, created um, from the sale of the bonds itself. So, so it's, a, it's a bidding parameter, basically. So we allowed uh, the underwriters in the bid, the bidding process, where I'd come back on March 28th with the bids, so they can, it was at 0.8% back in 2019 it was as well. So we're recommending it stay at 0.8% here as well. So they can take all of that, some of that, or none of that. So that's kind of just their pricing and bidding parameters. So I think they came in back in 2019 when we offered 0.8%. They came in at 0.351. So I'm hoping that they'll come under, the winning bid will come under the 0.8, I suspect they will. And so that's how we determine the bid, the low bid is how much <clears throat> underwriter discount or fee they take and then the interest rate on the bond and we present value it and all that fancy stuff in a formula and we give you the first bid, the second, third, fourth, you know, how many bids we get and we kind of line them up for you, put the best one on the top. So it's really hard to say exactly where that's going to land at this point. But we need to give them enough um, of that carrot, so to speak, that they'll bid on the bonds. So if we lower that too far down, we could lose a bidder or we could get a bid that's, or bids that are too high because they'll make up their price or their fee somewhere else in the, in the bond issue by raising our interest rate or something. Kind of like points on a mortgage, maybe you can think of it that way. Mm. You know, sometimes we pay for points on a mortgage, sometimes we don't. When we pay for points on a mortgage, we typically get a lower interest rate. That's how your bonds have been bid mm -hmm. in Tracy. Yep. But, uh, best case scenario is said if, if you could get some local banks interested, our underwriting costs would be could less. Possibly. Yeah, good question. And good point because that would probably go away. That part would go away. It wouldn't be. An underwriter fee and banks typically um, don't charge any kind of origination fee. Some do and give you a little lower rate, and most don't. They kind of treat it like a mortgage, so they'll just give us an interest rate. So yeah, if we get a mixture of that, again, I've seen that in many cities that if there's some banks that would like to bid, they certainly can. And then typically they, you know, they could be right up on the top there as the winning bid if they give us a low interest rate and don't take really any of that fee that we're offering. Mm -hmm. How's yeah. oh, so the city of Tracy's credit rating holding up? No, I probably haven't <clears throat> looked at that in a while. I mean, typically there's sort of some surveillance. I don't know, Eric, if you've had a call from Standard & Poor's and gone through any yeah, yeah. surveillance ratings, typically they look every, at you every couple of years if they've got time. And last time, you know, we issued bonds, you were at an A category. And then so the last time we issued these bonds, we got them guaranteed by the state of Minnesota also because they're infrastructure bonds. So, you know, one of the resolutions that are in front of you too is to enter into state credit enhancement so we can get that up to a triple A. And so the state of Minnesota will guarantee the bonds and then we'll get the rating of the state of Minnesota behind it as well, which in turn, we tend to believe that will lower the interest rate for you as well. So nothing any different than how we had it structured in 2019, just another one of those being issued. Yeah. Now, does this delay, is this going to affect the interest rate that rural development has promised on the long-term loan? Is that locked in yet? Yes. Um, so the way that that process works is that uh, we are getting a long-term loan for $8.4 million, which is why this is $8.4 million, mm -hmm. because we can't get, we're not going to get more than that from rural development. Um, and that money is, the interest rate is like 2.4%. Um, we're due to get that in, you know, May of 2023, you know, presuming that the project, you know, gets completed, you know, on the schedule, you know, between now and then. Um, and so ultimately that money then will be used to pay off this temporary bond 
and then that would be a 40-year loan with the payments then to start subsequent to that. Yeah. So you're setting this up for three years, Yeah. this yeah. new bond, and if we don't get done in the time you said in 2023, will still be covered by you, say it runs a year over? Not not completing, and the short answer to your question is yes, yeah. um, but the long term, the, the longer answer to your question is, is that if we don't get the project completed by the spring of 2023, we have bigger issues. Because rural development says we're supposed to get it done by then. And so we'll have to get permission from, from them to extend it. Um, it. We have no reason to believe at this point that we need that, but, but as I indicated before, because we've changed the scope of this project, you know, with these bonds decommissioning, and we don't yet know what the cost of the Center Street project is, uh, we might have to make some changes again, you know, on that. Um, but ultimately, at this point, we're scheduled to complete the project in the spring of 2023, yes. Yep. Because we can't issue another temporary bond for this project, it's best to go out the three years just in case. It doesn't cost anything extra other than we'd have to pay interest payments for a longer period of time. Um, but but ultimately, uh, ultimately, it's better to be safe than sorry. Because we, we don't want to have to come up with $8.4 million to pay it off, you know, if we don't have it. So that's going to be coming from rural development. So then this cost went from 8790 or whatever it was, Eric, to 125000 It's As I understand what, what uh, Todd is saying is, is that it could be up to that, as I understand it. Uh, what we paid for two, yep. three years ago was $87,000. <coughs> if the bid on the underwriters um, could be as high as 0.8% of the total, which is the, the amount that you see there, yep. um, if the bid is lower, it could be less. Um, the nuance that um, that was not explained to me uh, was that even though we should pay the same amount that we're paying three years ago, sure. is that it could be more. It could be less. It could be more. It can't be up any higher than the point eight that we give. It can't be any higher than one hundred twenty-five thousand. We don't know yet what that cost is going to be, uh, because the underwriters will be bidding on that. Uh, when we know that, then ultimately we'll have to bring back a budget amendment to you too as well, because your question is going to be where does that money come from. Where's that money? Um, so I'll answer that question. Uh, what we're anticipating that where that money is going to come from is essentially excess revenues from the water and sewer uh, funds this year. We had expected to bring in more revenue than we had expenses in those funds. Um, and we wanted that to go to fund balance for savings so that, so that we could build that up again. Because you might remember that uh, the presentation that Abdo gave us about a year ago, well, yeah, more than a year ago now, um, our, in particular, our reserve fund and the water fund is, is very small. And so we were trying to build some reserve. Uh, we're basically going to be, uh, at this point, not putting too much into reserve. So we have the revenues to do it. You know, it's not going to cost the taxpayers anything. It just means there'll be less money going into the water and sewer and storm sewer fund reserve this year than we anticipated. Yep. So the discount allowance there is the 67,160, and so that's they can take all of that, some of that, or none of that. So, and if the local banks want to get in on this and uh, don't charge an origination fee, that would be similar. I mean, it would be kind of come out of that bucket. Then we would <laughs> then we would save on that, and that would just be less cash that you folks would have to. So um, entice a bank in, though sure. we'd have to make sure that the money from the USDA can fulfill the... I mean, I think that I think yep. that from their perspective, you know, what they're going to be looking at is, is, that, is there a surety that I'm going to get my, you know, my, my money back? I mean, ultimately, um, at the end of the day, you know, they're going to look at the bond rating with the credit enhancement. Yeah. That's going to be a triple-A bond. Yeah. I, 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 we don't... In, I, I think it's... I'll let you comment on what you think the risk is for the buyers. Thanks. I think it's... Uh, I think it's kind of a double barrel um, security blanket for them. Like Eric is saying that we have the state guarantee behind it for non-payment. The state will pay it. We don't want that, that to happen, but that's that security as well. And then we do have the, the USDA's um, commitment, right? So for a long-term takeout. 
So that's pretty. That's a pretty good guarantee that that uh, bondholders will will be paid. They're not going to be paid from another temporary bond, um, but the city also then has um, has the ability to issue this long term as well. But the interest rate is going to be higher than the USDA rate, and we're not going to get 40 years because we have a special provision in the law that USDA can go out 40 years, and the rest of us can only go out 30. So, so there's lots. Lots of good things behind it for, for a bondholder to say yes to. Um, it's a it's a pretty it's got a lot of good security behind it. So turn around if people want money. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to government. <laughs> I thought farming was tough. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it looks to me like we need to pass uh, resolution 2022-24. That motion? I so make uh, that motion. I'll second it. First and second, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Woman. Yes. Howard? Aye. Jones? Aye. Tees? Aye. Land Aye. Schmidt? Yes. Mayor Corman. Aye. And one more resolution. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2022-25 authorizing the city to enter into the credit enhancement program agreement. I'll second it. First and second. Any further discussion? Did we do this in the past? Yeah, what is it? <laughs> this is what gets us that better credit, goes up to the AAA, yep. and okay. then it gives it that okay. second layer of, layer of stability or security. safety net. Safety net. Yeah. When did safety. we do that last, mm -hmm. remember? You know, I try to do it on, on as many utility bonds as I can because that's what it's for. So if I, 2019, we did it, you know, for sure on the temp. Um, so if anything after that, if you had a, even a street bond that needed to be, we had to cut deep uh, with Shane, you know, Shane's blessing that it was a utility project, um, we probably put it on there too. So you probably had it on a few bonds here, that backing before. Are you ready for roll call for that? Okay. Schmidt. Yes. Uh, Schoens. Aye. Tell. Aye. Tees. Aye. Hootman. Yes. Landry. Aye. Mayor <coughs> Corman. Aye. All right. Thank you very much. We'll uh, get this done right for you. Appreciate thank you. it. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Thank, thank you for coming. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Yep. Yeah. Got a short drive home. <laughs> you got a jet out there somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's all we have for new business. We'll make a motion to close the regular meeting and open the closed meeting. Can we have a break? Mm -hmm. Yeah, break. I'll second that. We just got to kick people out. <laughs> Thank you.